Welcome back to a very special Comedy Hype News Show. Today we have someone you may not have seen in a minute. P.A. <laughs> did you miss me? And did you miss me? With everything that's been going on in comedy, whether it's Shannon Sharp's explosive interviews with Cat Williams and Monique, or comedy beasts like Donnell Rawlings and Corey Holcomb coming to the forefront, we can't wait to hear what Pierre has to say. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna give you a round of applause and welcome thank back. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. There it is, there it is. Before diving into everything, mm -hmm. how have you been? Good, actually good. Uh, busy as heck, we've yeah. really been busy. Uh, didn't know, uh, you know, when one thing moves, other things open up, so uh, I've been really busy, but um, glad to be, I'm glad to be back in this chair, though. I yeah. Can't, I can't front, I'm glad to be back. Well, it feels good to have you here okay. because, Pierre, I'm going to be honest, I've been getting a lot of DMs, okay. comments, okay. comments under our post on YouTube, and it's the elephant in the room, so I want to start there. We're going to just address the elephant in the room. Why? And the main question has been, do you have a beef with comedy hype? What's been going on? Why haven't we seen on the platform? So from your vantage point, what, what are your thoughts there? Um, first of all, I've been really busy. Um, shout out to those who supported my, uh, who supported my movie, Slice 1, 2, Two on Tubi. Keep watching on Tubi. Thank you so much. You know, I produce movies, touring like crazy. This this platform helped me, you know, elevate my my, my attendance to on comedy shows. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing a lot of shows. For those who come to the shows I've been to, thank you so much for supporting it. Um, Pierce Panic Room. You know how that is. It's yeah, uh, yeah. it's a lot of work. I mean, I respect what John does here to even get this show off the road <laughs> every once in a while. I got a podcast. I got to really work. Um, and we've been having great, great guests, really great guests. I mean, you know, excited. Um, you know, had a little more time to pull and get people and do more meetings and talking to them. I um, uh, got a couple of big, big heavy hitters. Uh, who was it? Like Tasha K. She's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tasha K. Off the chain. <laughs> well, that's gonna be a you off two the, together. Off, okay, off the chain. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say uh, just just a lot of working. I've been doing a lot of a lot of traveling, working, uh, building some other stuff, writing some more scripts and so forth. Um, Getting a little break, you know, uh, from this. Uh, not like it's a negative. This wasn't a negative. It was just took a lot of my time and um, energy. I miss it though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of weird. Something like I'm back in the seat here. I'm feeling good again. I'm like ready to start. Doop 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 doop. So, you know, just been really straight busy. Just really yeah. been busy. Yeah, because a lot of people, of course, you know, they automatically assume that it's it's beef, but sometimes it's just business. Right, right. No, you know, it was. It was business. Um, so for those who think that, you know, whenever somebody separates, it's got to be a negative reason, you mad about stuff. Not at all. I'm right. a businessman, first of all, so I get business. Um, and the dollars and, and the incoming dollars and outgoing dollars just wasn't making sense to John. You, yeah. know, you know what I'm saying? He had, th what, four of us, you know yeah. what I'm saying, that he had to pay. Um, I understand. I have my value, what I feel like I'm worth, and he has, you know, what he knows what the numbers are. And if the numbers don't coincide, then sometimes you got to, you know, re revamp certain things Absolutely. and see where it stands at. Um, we just need, you know, y'all folks to watch more and share. How about that? You know, right. share it if you want to see us more. Sponsorships. Share so the, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So the money comes in. Um, if you like this program, you like what we were doing, it wasn't a matter of he didn't want to do it no more. It just wasn't making financial sense to him. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and, you know, you know I, I'm a costly uh, situation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad we got that out of there. So that's, you know, people keep sending me DMs and leaving me comments like, oh, so you're not bringing Pierre? Yeah. Like, and they think it's me, and I'm like, Really? It's, yeah, no, they're, they're like mad girl. at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, no, no. I think we're going to, uh, you know, I think things are going to work themselves out to, for us to come back again. Yeah. You know, I really think Absolutely. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We're I mean, John's trying this, hard. So I, I can give, let me shout out to John. On, um, he's trying hard to make it work. And um, once it makes, you know, what do they say? If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. sense yeah. But it got to go both ways. Absolutely. His, his way and my way. So, you know, our way. And I miss the whole crew having yeah. a good time. And I think it was a needed component, man, um, you know, you know, comics talking about stuff. And then sometimes we went on, it wasn't comedy we were talking about, we went right. to other stuff. But still, I just thought it was a, a good unit. And when I walk the streets, people always ask me, why aren't you back on comedy? What's up? We miss you. What's up? I hear it all the time, too. So people miss this group of people, you know, coming together. And um, behind, behind closed doors, things are being worked on to Absolutely. get it back to where we're at. Speaking of things in comedy okay. and all the things that are happening. And, you know, like, because I haven't Woo! had you here. We've seen Cat Explosive's right. interview with Shannon Sharp on mm -hmm. Club Shay Shay. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts there when it comes to that Cat interview? How much of that? Um, that's, a good, that's a good question. I'll say it this much. Um, my answer to what is real, wasn't real, mm -hmm. really doesn't matter. I'm just being real with you. Yeah. Because I learned a lesson through this, through, through what Cat did. Um, if you're riding with him, if you like him, 
and don't like the person he's talking about, whatever he says is going to be truthful to you. Right. There's nothing can be changed. Mm. I, I can give you the real numbers and all that. I don't want to hear it. You know, it is, it, which, what Cash says is true. Yeah. Even if people know some of the stuff isn't true, if they're riding for you, they're like, that, that, that's par for the course. We, we go, it don't have to be all true. We like what he's saying, and that's it. And so I learned that lesson. Um, and it's truth to, it's Cash truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who am I to say it's not true? It's his truth at the end of the day. I can say that wasn't true. This ain't true. You know, use common sense if you can, you know, and you can whittle out what's true and what wasn't. But it doesn't matter. If you like it that much, you like him. And you like what he says. I'm kind of happy they opened the door. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of how much is true, how much is not true, he opened the door. And you see how that door opened and a lot of comics started talking. I want to ask about Shannon Sharp too, but I want to stay in this space mm -hmm. of comics. What are your thoughts of, of all the beasts? Because I do feel like after that interview, people did start opening mm -hmm. up more, but then a lot of beasts start coming to the forefront. Right. Like you start seeing a lot of people, you know, in the light. Well, let me tell you, first of all, it's because we're comedians and we're supposed to give you comedy and humor and make you feel good. Mm. So it's shocking when that element is not being put out Which, there yeah. and it's a negative element or the art, like, y'all don't like each other? I thought y'all were comedians, we're having fun. It ain't no different than your job, okay? Then you don't love everybody at your job. If you had a chance to tell, tell, tell all your co-workers how you really felt and not lose anything really, you, you know, it'd be a little bit different than the smiles you get at work. You know what I'm saying? So comedy is no different than any other profession when it comes to having beefs or how you feel about people. Um, we just came out and talked about it. That's all. We you know we came out and spoke how we felt and um, it's been going on forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For, for years, I've been in this game for over 35 years. It's been beefs and hatred and some people have been doing some bitch ass shit, holding people back, lying, trying to get, get people on shows, take people off shows, all kind of madness has yeah. been happening. And people didn't really want to voice their opinion because when you voice your opinion, it's like, oh, you just hating because that person's bigger than you and all that. No, no, I'm telling you what it is. I've said stuff. And people are like, oh, you just mad. No, he's mad. I'm just telling well, okay, I'm mad about the bullshit, yeah. Right. But I can't express it. Yeah. And then people, and, and, and I don't never believe this. I don't believe that you, have the, you, you should really have the right to tell someone else pain, to tell someone else how they should feel about their pain. Yeah. You just mad because let me have mine. Yeah. And you want you to have yours when you feel a certain way. You know, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's been going on for years. And now it's starting to open the can of worms in a bigger way. You've heard of it before. You've heard how people didn't like so-and-so. Let's say Steve Harvey or Monique or whatever. You've heard it in smaller dosage. Right. Now, starting to all the comics are basically start talking on. You know, I talk about it on my, my podcast. I do once a week at my house, you know, about stuff um, going on. And, you know, here's the thing. I mean, the reason why it, it, it kind of can really work. Back in the days, we had what's called a gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. So Warner Brothers, NBC, CBS, people would tell agents would tell you, you can't work. You, you know, I'm a, I'm a blackball you. Now, them days is over. Right. Because the internet lets you do what you want. Correct. So you ain't gonna blackball me. Great job. You, you, exactly. Yeah. So now there's no more fear of saying, if I open my mouth, they might hold me back. Yeah. Hold me back. You can't hold me back no more. As long as you guys like that person and continue to support that person, no matter uh, the ups and downs. I mean, Cat Williams is a good example. He might not be in Hollywood doing certain things, but his fan base keeps supporting him, and he's going to keep on saying what he wants to because you can't hurt him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now a lot of comics feel like, you know what? I don't want to do Hollywood. I'm going to do what the hell I want to do and say what I want to say. Why do, you think, why do you think that is? Why do you think people are going to a, a Shannon Sharp to talk about? Because they're, do, they're doing the same thing. They're talking right. about the beefs, and they're right. just you know, releasing, but as opposed to when Comedy Hype covers those things, right, right, it's more right. like, oh, y'all messy. Because small, first of all, Comedy Hype is a small entity. You know, I mean, it's not as big as some of the other Shit. places. Yeah, exactly, some of the biggest places. So we feel like they don't have a right to speak. Comedy Hype doesn't have a right to say, y'all small, what y'all talking about? And them same niggas run to, to the bigger platform and, you know, Vlad TV and, you know, all the motherfuckers and tap dance and do the shit they want to do. But when it's small black owned companies, like, uh. And, that, you know, in fairness, in the, the small fairness, Comedy Hype has made a couple stumble moves, yeah, you, you know what I'm agree. saying? Yeah. That people jumped on them so hard for, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if another place, place, a bigger place, place would have done it, they wouldn't have done it as much. Right. We are quick to hold ourselves down. Black Comedy Hype is a black owned place, black owned star, black owned, everything's black. I don't see nothing white in here but the teeth and shit in the room, okay? So, to be, to be, okay? <laughs> so that's about the only thing is, is and they, they um, you know, been for, for so many years, we do that to ourselves sometimes, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We, we, we hold ourselves to a higher standard, mm -hmm. way higher standard, you know what I'm saying? And um, like I said, Comedy Hype is not doing anything different than the Shannon Show. In fact, I would say almost a little bit more different. They promote and try to do other things outside of black comedy, you know, you know what I'm gotcha. saying, to help each other. Well, some of these other places just exploit black comedy, Correct. you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, but, 
you know, it's about the numbers. If Comedy Hype had 10 million followers or five subscribers or 5 million subscribers, all that should be dialed down a little more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we don't. And I'm proud of it. I remember I started with Comedy Hype. It had 150,000 subscribers. Now they're over 900,000. I mean, a million subscribers in a couple yeah. of years. like three years. Yeah. That's a hell of a move. Yeah, you know, it's growing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's growing. So if they had the bigger names on here, like real big names on it, like Shannon Boys Sharp, get, come on. Yeah. You know I mean, Shannon Sharp got... Damn near, what was it, uh, a million people in a month after Cat, Cat Williams? Yeah. A million. He had 1.8. Now he's at one, like, I mean, 3 million after a month, six weeks. Crazy. Let, Cat, <laughs> let Cat Williams have done it here. Correct. This would be a different situation also. But, you know, so I'm proud to be down, not with the underdog. I'm not going to call comedy hype an underdog, right. but someone growing from the grassroots. Right. Really I'm down for that. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Do you think it hurts us more because we are black owned? Because even honestly, when I look at your podcast, I should see some of those big names on your podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 But I just think, it, I ain't going to lie, it hurts me at times when I see some of the people I reach out to don't come back. Well, I got you. I'm going to do your shit. But run the Vlad or run the Shay Shay now. Like, I get it. I yeah. get the business part of it. So I ain't no fool. But, you know, I feel like, damn, like, even I, at the level I am, I'm a, I'm a decent level. I've done people who have a thousand followers podcast, five thousand followers. I understand the yeah. grind. Yeah. I'm on a grind. So I have, I mean, one day I said, I'm, whoever wants me on this podcast on this particular day, I'm going to do it. I want to do 11 podcasts in one day. Wow. I was like, just get to give back. Yeah. So when I see some of these bigger dudes that I was in the trenches with, on open mic night, or starving and struggling with, and we've been rolling and rolling, now I, I reach out to them and they give me the little shun shun, mm -hmm. but run to the white man or the Shannon Shaw or the bigger platforms. Hi, right, nigga, I ain't gonna forget. Yeah. All right? Yeah. It is what it is, bro. But, but you know, it's funny. I reached out to Monique years ago when I had my platform, The Panic Room. Yeah. And I got to her husband, and he told me she wouldn't do my platform because I didn't support her strong enough mm -hmm. with, with the Amy Schumer stuff. And I was like, hold on, strong enough? You know, the question was asked on this platform, what would you have done? Correct. I gave my opinion, what I would have done. You know, I, I would say, you know, basically, I would have done the, I would have took the 500 and blah, 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 did what I, you know. And I would have flipped it to the point where I would have maybe apologized in a funny way to, you know, to the other people. This is my opinion. Or whatever I would have done to make people want to watch the show and then get some views and I will get the five million or whatever I want next time. That's what I said. I didn't say she's wrong. Correct. I said what I would have done. Correct. And they took that shit and said, nah, nah. I said, okay, you know, that, that, that nice, well, we, we love you, but nah, nah, nah. Okay. Yeah. And then they run to other places that don't give two shits about them. She went on Netflix. She right. ended up having a special well, on Well, the Shannon, the to all the other places. I'm like, all right, Monique, I get it. I get it. You know, yeah. I get it. So, so if I don't go along with everything you do, then I ain't the right. Those uh, white folks and big executives can do what they want, yeah. and, and you going to fuck with them? Yeah. I get it. I get it. I yeah. get it. And I feel like you should also mend with other people that you feel like that, quote unquote, didn't support you during the time. Well, there you go. Yeah. There you go. So, and, I, and look, I love Modi. I love her grind. I know where she's from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I get that. But uh, I, I just believe, man, you know, that was, uh, you know, I, I was just surprised that she done done other podcasts. I'm like, all right. Yeah. So, you know, you got to tell people, I love you. Everything's perfect. You're the greatest in the world. <laughs> was you the with him, like, all right, then, all right. Yeah, that just kind of is what it is. Well, before you go, Pierre, I just have one more question. What do you think about just the state of comedy as a whole? Um, you know, <laughs> things evolve all the time, but they don't always evolve for the right way, for the right reasons. You know, I miss a, co a comic going on stage, doing material with punchlines, clever, like, mm, that's what I try to do. You come see my show, I have punchlines, I, I, I have wordplay. I still care about the art of comedy. Stand up. Now, some people just want to do, just go up there. It's about seeing a personality, mm -hmm. you know. At the end of the day, it's a business, and if you sell out doing whatever you're doing on stage, the comedy club owners just care about that. Got they you. don't care about the state of stand-up anymore. It's about, hey, I got to keep these lights on. I want to make money. I want to drive my Ferrari. I want to have my boat and shit. And if it's going to be putting a social media person on there who may not have a stand-up comedy act or just flipping and jumping, whatever the hell they're doing, changing clothes, whatever, if it sells out, it sells out. It's the fans. Of y'all, it's, it's up to y'all. It's not up to us as comedians. It's up to you guys. If you keep supporting that kind of stuff, that stuff's going to keep on happening. So when you hear a good comic come in town, you're like, eh, I ain't going to see But you want to see Yuck Man or Fart Man or whatever and shit, then it's going to be what it's going to be. Fart Man going to be, uh, you know, there more. So it's you are also to blame. Because like me, I may not sell out all the comedy clubs, but goddamn it, I'm a funny comic. Absolutely. I do good material, yeah. okay? Good material. I work on wordplay. I try to work it out. But if you want to see a dude up there just farting and shitting and changing clothes and dancing and singing for 25 minutes, I mean, if you do that, that's what's going to be out there. Yeah. So the state of comedy now is getting wild because when I was coming up, it was gatekeepers. Right. 
You had to watch somebody and say, no, nah, he can be on my comedy club. He's got good material. Now it's like whoever can, can sell an audience is what it is. And you're going to get everything. You know what I'm saying? More power to the youngsters for doing what they're doing. But some of that shit is just not stand-up comedy anymore. And it's like, okay, well, do what you got to do. You know, it's my job to get myself back into the position where I am. And all I can do is do my podcast, do my shows, do the best I can. If y'all want to see me, cool. You know what I'm saying? And more people are coming to see me, but I'm not selling out all the comedy clubs and all yeah. the shows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the state of comedy is where you guys make it. It's you. You're the consumer. It's all you to blame. It's not the act. It's you. Okay, so if you don't like where comedy's at, then go support comics who've got real good material. It's sad when I see it. It should be called something else other than stand-up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, speaking of all the things you have going on. Keep on watching P.S. Panic Room. Uh, we have great guests coming up. Um, for those who are watching Tubi, watch my movie Slice 1 and 2. It's a horror comedy. I wrote it, produced it, directed, and financed it. all black production. Well, we had a white cameraman, but uh, <laughs> let me show you, you the film right. Sure. No, 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 but yeah, so keep supporting it on Tubi and my touring around the country. Um, you know, just to, and, and support comedy hype because there's no beef here. Correct. Yeah. I mean, why, why would I be here? For, when you see my podcast, when you see this brick wall there, I'm still coming here and filming. Yeah. So the love is here. It's just we got to work it out, and we will work it out. So it's not a beef at all. So don't try to start a beef when there's no beef with none of none, none, none with me and comedy hype. And I'm quite sure none of Yamanika and Capone. You know, there's no beef. It's just got to work it, structure it out. We need you guys to watch it more, share it. You know, talk about it more in the comments, and that way we can come back. But um, there's definitely no beef. I love comedy hype, man. I'm I'm, I'm a supporter of it. Like I said, and they they've taken care of me and helped me out. So. There's no beef here, and I'll, uh, hopefully I'll be in this chair more often. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Don't forget to put it in the comments. Oh, I'm the same man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's up?